Hey there, gang. In the next few videos, we'll be taking a look at different types of centers of triangles. In this video, we're going to be focusing on what's called the circumcenter and the end center. So the perpendicular bisectors, which we talked about in a previous lesson, you'll want to review those notes if you forgot what a perpendicular bisector is. Uh, of the sides of a triangle intersect at a point that is called the circumcenter of the triangle. The circumcenter is always equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. So if you look at the triangle to the left, triangle ABC, we're going to answer some questions about this triangle. Uh, question one asks us to list the perpendicular bisectors. Uh, so there are three perpendicular bisectors of this triangle. The first one is segment PF, and you can see PF as a perpendicular bisector because it intersects the side AC of the triangle at a right angle, and it also bisects that side. You can see that based on those congruency marks. So that's why it's a perpendicular bisector. Uh, the same is true of segment PD, it intersects side AB at a right angle, bisecting that side of the triangle. And then, finally, uh, segment PE does the same thing to side BC. Okay, so those are the three perpendicular bisectors. Uh, the circumcenter, from the definition above, is the point where the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle intersect. So those three segments that we listed in one here, they all intersect at the point P. So that means P is the circumcenter of the triangle. Uh, question three asks us to list all the congruent segments of the triangle. So based on those congruency marks, we know that segment AD is congruent to segment DB. We know that segment BE is congruent to segment EC. We know that segment AF is congruent to segment FC. Those are the pretty obvious ones. And then there's one um, other relationship here that uh, is not so obvious. Uh, because you just learned about it, uh, and it's up here in this second uh, statement uh, that says, again, the circumcenter is always equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. So what that means is if I draw a line from the circumcenter P to one of the triangle's vertices, so let's just draw a line from P to A, that segment is the same distance as P to another vertice, let's say B, or P to C. So those three segments that I just outlined there in black are all congruent to each other. So that's segment AP, segment BP, and segment CP. All three of those segments are congruent to each other. All right, so let's try some examples now. Uh, involving circumcenter. So example one says if Z is the circumcenter of triangle TUV, uh, we need to find each missing measure. Well, let's start with A. A is asking us to find the measure of TU, which is this side of the triangle. And because Z is a cir circumcenter, uh, you know that the segment XZ is bisecting segment TU. So that means that uh, since XU is 19, TX is also 19, and TU has to be 38. All right, then for B, VY, that would be this part of the triangle. Again, you know that VY is congruent to segment YU. 
and you know that VU measures 34, so that means VY has to be half of that, or 17. All right, uh, C, segment UZ, which is this segment right here. Um, that's the distance from the circumcenter to a vertice of the triangle, and you know uh, from what we listed above that all of those distances are equal to each other. So that um, segment UZ will be congruent to the segment TZ, which is also congruent to the segment VZ. And we have VZ labeled as 21, so that means UZ is also 21. All right, for D, uh, you need to find the length of segment WV. And for this one, um, we don't know the length of TW and we don't know the length of TV. So we can't do what we did for A and B to find this length. Well, what I need to do for this particular um, missing measure is apply the Pythagorean theorem. So this is gonna require a little bit more work than the first three have done. So for D, I'm going to focus on this triangle here. I know that I have a right angle because I know that this segment uh, WZ is a perpendicular bisector. So that means I can use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, I can call uh, this missing length X, and so that would be X squared plus 15 squared equals 21 squared. For this problem. So that's x squared plus 225 equals 441. So then I get x squared equals 216 and the square root of 216 rounded to the nearest tenth is 14.7. And then finally part E asks us to find uh, TV now which is uh, just going to be double the length of WV. So since TV is 14.7, uh, or WV is 14.7, TV would be 29.4. All right, we'll do the same thing on number two. Be sure you're writing down questions um, so you can ask those tomorrow in class of any parts of these you don't understand. Uh, number two, M is the circumcenter of this triangle. <clears throat> we need to find each of the missing measures. So we'll start with GI. GI is this side of the triangle. So we know that GL uh, and LI are equal to each other. So since LI is 30, GL is also 30. Therefore, GI has to be 60. All right, MH, that's the distance from the circumcenter to one of the vertices. So that's congruent to each of these distances. But unfortunately, we don't know any of those distances, so that fact doesn't really help us uh, for part B. Um, but what I do know is if I take a look at this triangle here, triangle MJH, um, I know that GJ is going to be equal to JH, so this is 31. And now I have two out of three parts of a right triangle. So now I can use Pythagorean theorem to find MH. So let me label MH as X. This is for part B. So this would be, uh, X would be the hypotenuse here. So this would be 14 squared plus 31 squared equals X squared. So that's 196 plus 961 equals x squared. So x squared is 1157. And the square root of 1157 is 34.0. We'll just say 34. And so that's the measure of mh. All right, IK, I'll need to do the same thing. Um, I know 
Uh, now that IM uh, is also going to be 34, since all of, the, of those blue segments have to be congruent to each other. Um, but I don't know IH or KH, so I have to use Pythagorean theorem again for uh, this triangle down here, triangle MIK. So this is Pythagorean theorem again for part C. Um, IK is a leg, so I'll call that X again. So that's X squared plus the other leg is 23. So plus 23 squared equals 34 squared. So that's X squared plus 529 equals 1156. So x squared is 627, and that's going to be x equals 25. Part D, uh, hi is the entire length of this segment down here. So I know ik is now 25, so if I double that, I get ih, uh, and so that's going to be... 50. All right, and then finally, uh, mg. Mg is one of the blue segments, and we know those are all congruent to each other. Uh, we said mh was 34, so mg will also be 34. Okay, so some of these missing parts take um, a bit of work, and uh, some do not, just depending on what you're trying to find and what information you have. All right, let's jump to the back side now, and now we'll talk about in center. So whereas the perpendicular bisectors um, intersect to form the in center, the angle bisectors of a triangle intersect at the in center. And the in center is always equidistant from the sides of the triangle. So very similar uh, in terms of definitions there. It's just uh, we've got angle bisectors and sides here as opposed to perpendicular bisectors and vertices. So in this triangle on the left, the angle bisectors uh, would be the following uh, segments. Uh, segment PB is an angle bisector because it cuts angle B into two congruent angles. Segment PC is an angle bisector for the same reasons. And then segment PA is the third angle bisector. Those three angle bisectors intersect at the point P. So P in this case is the in center. And then all of the congruent segments... Uh, you have to think about some of these carefully. Let's start with um, the ones from the definition of in-center. So notice the second part says the in-center is always equidistant from the sides of the triangle. So therefore, um, I know that the distance from P to each side of the triangle um, are going to be equal, and so that would be these segments here, PD, PE, and PF. Okay, each of those segments that I've highlighted in black there are equal to each other because that's the distance uh, from the end center to the side of the triangle, each of those. Okay, and then I have a few more statements that I can write uh, that maybe don't seem obvious right away. But if you look closely, you'll notice that I have three pairs of right triangles inside this large triangle here. Uh, for instance, I've got a pair here. I'll call those triangles one and two. And those triangles there share a hypotenuse. That's the uh, segment AP in pink there. And they also have legs that are congruent to each other. DP and PF are congruent. And so you'll remember from talking about uh, triangle congruency in the last unit, if we have right triangles that have um, congruent, a, a congruent hypotenuse and congruent legs, we can use hypotenuse leg to show that the entire uh, triangle is congruent to the other one. And so that means that this second leg, AD, 
is congruent to the second leg AF. So I can show that AD is congruent to AF, and I can do that because of a hypotenuse leg, and then after that, uh, congruent or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, so that's what allows me to do that. I can do the same thing, therefore, um, for um, <clears throat> DB and BE. Those two legs of these two triangles up here, I'll call them three and four, um, are congruent to each other by the same reasons. And then finally, I can do the same thing uh, for, let's call this triangle five and six, EC and CF. All right, so now let's do some examples uh, regarding in center. Uh, so example three says that P is the in-center of triangle JKL, so we need to find each of those four missing measures on the right. So A is asking us to find the measure of NP. Well, we know that this distance from the in-center to a side of the triangle is going to be congruent to uh, the other distances here and here. And since we know this measure is 8, NP must also be 8. NK uh, is the next one. <clears throat> so that's this part of the triangle right here. Remember what we just did above with the congruent segments. Um, I know that <clears throat> NK is going to be congruent to KO because these are two smaller right triangles. Uh, that share a hypotenuse and uh, have common leg or have corresponding legs congruent. So that means the second leg has to be congruent as well. So NK must therefore be 17. All right, the two parts that are going to require a little bit of work here with Pythagorean theorem are PK. So PK uh, is here. And we can only find uh, that distance by uh, using Pythagorean theorem. So I know NP is 8, and I know NK is 17. So I can use Pythagorean theorem to find that missing piece there, PK. So this would be 8 squared plus 17 squared equals X squared. So that's 64 plus 289 equals x squared. So x squared is 353. Uh, and that rounds to 18.8 .8 for x. All right, and then the same thing for LO. Uh, LO down here. I'm going to need to use Pythagorean theorem for, so I'll call that X now. Um, I know uh, that side PO is 8, and I know the hypotenuse of that small triangle down there is 13, uh, so I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem to find that missing side there, X. So this is X squared plus 8 squared equals 13 squared. So X squared plus 64 equals 169 x squared is 105, and therefore x is 10.2. All right, example four, we're actually going to save um, for class the next time, so we'll work on that one when you get back. Um, until then, make sure you have all of your questions written down so we can address those the next time I see you. Until then, have a nice day. You're all wonderful people. Take care.